Hey guys, this is Miss Dyer, and this video is for Thursday, August the 27th. If you'll remember, at the beginning of the week, we started Unit 2, uh, Epithelial Tissues, and we said that there are two kinds of uh, epithelial tissues, lining and covering epithelial tissues, and glandular epithelial tissues. Uh, we finished lining and covering epithelia yesterday. Um, lining and covering epithelia include all those pictures that you've looked at, those six different types that we've talked about, the simple squamous, the simple cuboidal, the simple columnar, the stratified squamous, the pseudostratified columnar, and the transitional tissue. All of those are types of lining and covering epithelial tissues, meaning that they line and cover things. They line spaces and cover things. Uh, the other type of gland of the uh, epithelial tissue that we need to talk about now is glandular epithelia. That's the, the only one that we haven't talked about. When we talk about glandular epithelia, we are talking about uh, epithelial tissue that is found lining glands. It makes up glands. Uh, there are different kinds of glands. A gland is one or more cells that, that makes and secretes a liquidy or aqueous or watery fluid. And uh, we can classify glands by where they release their product, uh, the number of cells that form the gland. And when we talk about the release of the product, uh, we have endocrine glands and exocrine glands. Endo meaning inside and exo, exo meaning outside. So those are the two different general types of glands based upon where the product is released. The number of cells forming the gland, that is gonna be unicellular or multicellular. Again, uni means one and multi means many. So when we look at endocrine glands, these are glands that are found inside your body and they produce uh, hormones that stay inside your body. They are ductless, ductless glands, which means that they do not have a duct. Uh, they do not have a little tube that empties the product out into the uh, out into some, into a space or onto your, your surface of your body. Uh, they they produce hormones that enter your bloodstream. So their product never, never gets to the outside of the body. Their product, those hormones, stay inside your body in your bloodstream. And so that is why we call these endocrine glands, because not only are they found inside your body, but their product, the substances that they release, which are called hormones, stay inside your body in your bloodstream. And so therefore, they are called endocrine glands. These are going to be examples of endocrine glands would be like your pancreas, the, the ovaries and testes, uh, the adrenal glands, the pituitary gland, the thyroid gland. Those are endocrine glands. And we actually... Uh, probably won't have time in this class, but but in a college anatomy class, you would actually spend an entire unit on just what we call the endocrine system, talking about all those different endocrine glands that release hormones that stay in your bloodstream. Uh, so we're not going to spend a lot of time on those. Um, the ones that we want to pay attention to, the ones that we're going to talk about here that, that contain glandular epithelial tissue are called exocrine glands. These are called exocrine glands. Remember <coughs> that Exo means outside. And so these glands secrete uh, their products onto epithelial surfaces. And most of the time, the products of these glands reach the outside of your body. OK, so examples of these kinds of glands would be like your sweat glands, your oil glands, mammary glands, um, the glands that produce your tears, the glands in your ear that produce your body wax, uh, mucus, glands that produce mucus. Uh, those are considered exocrine glands. Again, exo means outside. So most of the products of these glands will reach the outside of your body. They, they will come out of your body. Uh, they do have... Uh, they do have ducts, unlike endocrine glands. Okay, we also talked about unicellular and multicellular glands. Okay, multicellular glands have many cells. Multi means many. Unicellular glands have only one cell. Uni means one. And the only important unicellular gland that we're going to mention is the goblet cell. And if you will recall, we mentioned the goblet cell when we talked about simple columnar epithelial tissue. Uh, I think it was Monday when we talked about simple columnar epithelial tissue. Um, we talked about, or it may have been Tuesday. I don't remember. But anyway, uh, we talked about uh, the goblet cell. And we actually looked at a picture that had a go had goblet cells, a, si a picture of simple columnar that had goblet cells. Those goblet cells looked like little 
uh, bubbles in the uh, simple columnar cells with, you know, in between the cells. Uh, so that goblet cell in that simple columnar uh, is a cell that is a, is a unicellular exocrine gland that secretes mucus. Uh, and remember, we find simple columnar along with these goblet cells in our digestive tract. And so we have these goblet cells secreting mucus into our digestive tract, uh, again, helping to make the movement of materials through your digestive tract from your mouth to your anus uh, more smooth, helping the, the material, the food that you eat to move more smoothly through your digestive tract. That mucus also, we'll talk about this later, it acts as a buffer. It kind of helps to neutralize some of the acid in a lot of the food that we eat. Okay, so the rest of the glands that we're going to be talking about besides those goblet cells, all the rest of the glands that we're going to talk about today are multicellular exocrine glands, meaning that they contain many cells. And all of those multicellular exocrine glands have a duct, uh, which is uh, a tube that leads from the gland to the outside epithelial surface. And then they have the secretory unit. Okay, the secretory unit is the the inside of the gland, the, the gland itself that is producing the product, whether it be tears or milk or oil or sweat, whatever the case may be. So when we talk about these multicellular exocrine glands, we're going to talk about a few different things. We're going to talk about their mode of secretion, their type of secretion, and their structure. Okay, the mode of secretion means how does the secretion, how does the product, how does the oil or the tears or the milk, how does it get, get out of the gland cells, out of the cells in this gland? The type of secretion is talking about, okay, what, what type of secretion is it? What does it look like? What's it made of? And then the structure is how we're going to get the name of the gland. So the structure is very important in, in giving us the name of the gland. So we're going to look at each one of these individually. So first we're going to look at the mode of secretion. And this is how does the product, how, does, how do the tears or the sweat or whatever get out of the gland cells in the gland? The first mode is merocrine. And the important word here is exocytosis. The products, uh, the, the oil, the tears, the sweat, whatever, is getting out of the gland cells by exocytosis. Basically, this means that the, the product, let's say the sweat, for example, is enclosed in a little sac. And then that little, that little sac is composed of cell membrane materials. And when that little sac gets to the cell membrane, it combines with the cell membrane and releases its product outside the cell. So that's exocytosis. This is the most common mode of secretion. Uh, the next one is apocrine secretion. The, in, uh, the important words here are loss of cytoplasm. Okay, so we're going to have a similar process going on, except that when the product, when the sweat or whatever comes out of the gland cells, some of the inside of the cell comes out with it. Okay, that's what the cytoplasm is. It's the inside of the cell. So in, in merocrine, you just basically release the product uh, through exocytosis. With apocrine, not only do you release the product, but you al also release some of the cytoplasm, which basically is cell contents. So basically what happens whenever the product is released by apocrine secretion, the cell is going to be left a little bit smaller than what it was before because some of the cytoplasm of the cell came out with the product. So the, the, uh, the cell will be a little bit smaller. Again, with merocrine and apocrine, the cell is still okay. The cell is still producing product and secreting that product outside to, so that it can travel through the duct. Uh, to the epithelial surface, the skin or, uh, you know, the ear canal or wherever the case may be, the digestive tract. Okay, our third mode of secretion does not leave the cell intact and still secreting, and that is called holo, holocrine secretion. When I see that, that prefix holo, H-O-L-O, -O, I think of the Holocaust. What happened during the Holocaust? Well, lots and lots of people were killed. So holocrine involves the destruction of the cell. It kills the gland cell. Now, is this bad? No, this is not bad at all because, remember, these are multicellular glands. So if we have a cell that is dying when it produces its product, well, that's okay because we still have lots of other cells because this is a multicellular gland. We have more cells. So it's not, it doesn't hurt. It's not a bad thing, but that's how I remember it involves the destruction of the gland cell is holo, like holocaust. It kills the cell. So basically what happens here? How, why does it kill the cell? Basically the cell becomes really, really packed 
with the product, let's say oil, maybe. OK, the cell becomes really packed with the product and that product cannot get out of the cell. What it, for whatever reason, the product is the molecules are too big for whatever reason, the product cannot get out of the cell. So the cell just keeps producing more and more product and it gets bigger and bigger and bigger and swells up like a, an overfull balloon and it eventually just pops. And that's how the product gets out of the cell. So it's kind of like blowing up a balloon too full until it, it pops. And when that balloon, when that cell pops open or bursts open, that is called lysis, L-Y-S-I-S. So again, this one does destroy the cell. It kills the gland cell. That's not a bad thing. That is just how the product gets out um, of the cell. So those are the three modes. Merocrine is exocytosis is how the product gets out. Apocrine, again, the product is released along with the loss of cytoplasm. That is apocrine. Holocrine, the product is released when the gland cell bursts, when it lysis. Okay, so those are the three modes or the three ways that that products get out of the gland cells. Now we want to look at the types of secretion. They're pretty easy. If we have a watery secretion, the key word here is watery. If we have a watery secretion, we call that a serous secretion or a, a, a serous gland is producing that. If the, pro, if the product is more thick, like mucus, then we call it a mucus gland or a mucus secretion. If the product produces both watery and thick mucus, then we call this a mixed gland or a mixed secretion. Okay, so watery is serous, thick is mucus, and both watery and thick is mixed. That would be the type of secretion. Now we want to look at gland structure. Okay, we've talked about this already. Here's the duct. Okay, endocrine glands do not have a duct. This duct leads out onto the epithelial surface. Okay, so up here is the epithelial surface. Here's the duct or the little tube that carries the product out onto the epithelial surface. And here is the secretory unit. So this is the actual, what I would call the gland. These are the cells that will be releasing the serous or mucus or mixed secretion. These are the cells that will be releasing it by exocytosis or losing cytoplasm or popping and dying, being destroyed when they release the secretion. So these, this dark purple, this is the secretory unit where the secretion is being uh, produced and then let, in, let into this space. And then the duct is the little tube that the product uses to get out of the gland and onto the epithelial surface. So we're going to be talking about the duct, which is the little tube here, and we're going to be talking about the secretory unit, which is the little part here that is producing and releasing the product. Okay, so we're going to look at shape and branching pattern. The shape, if the <clears throat> gland cells form tubes, so if the secretory unit, again, we're looking at the secretory unit here, so that is this part right here. If the cells form a tube, we call it tubular. If the cells form circular pockets, we call it alveolar. And if the cells form both tubes and circular pockets, we call it tubuloalveolar. So when we look at this one, this one we would call more of a circular thing. So this would be a, uh, an alveolar shape of the secretory unit. Moving on, looking at the branching pattern. Uh, if, the, if the duct does not divide, then it is called simple. If the duct does divide, then it is called compound. So if we look at this one, this duct leads directly down into that secretory unit. It doesn't branch or divide. So this would be called simple. So the name of this gland is simple alveolar. Simple because the duct does not divide. Alveolar because it is a circular pocket. Okay. Now, if the last thing we need to talk about, if several secretory areas share the same duct, then we're going to call that uh, branched. We're going to say it's branched. So, for example, if we had two or three little circular pockets all attached to this same duct, then we would call this simple branched alveolar. As it is now, it's just simple alveolar. But if there were two or three more round pockets here, then we would call it simple branched alveolar. And I'll show you an example of that. So here is our uh, a tube. This is the duct. It does not divide. This is more of a tube shape, so this is simple tubular. This one is branched. We still have one duct, but notice we have three different tubes. So this is simple branched tubular. 
Here is a simple alveolar, similar to the diagram we've been looking at. And here is a simple branched alveolar. Notice that the duct does not divide, but we have three circular pockets that are sharing that same duct. So that's called simple branched alveolar. Now let's look at some compound glands. Here is a duct and notice how the duct divides into three other ducts. And then we have tubes uh, as the secretory units. Again, the red are your secretory units. This is compound tubular. If we have a duct that divides and then we have pockets in the secretory unit, circular pockets, that's called compound alveolar. If we have both tubes and pockets, so notice how, how this is compound because the duct divides into three other ducts, but notice we have a tube here, this looks like a tube, this looks like a tube, but notice we have some short round pockets. This is called compound tubulo alveolar. Now I do want you to notice, do you see how we have several tubes sharing this part, this duct here? We have several pockets sharing this duct and here. We have several different secretory units sharing this. So what was the name that we used when we have several pockets or tubes or both sharing the same duct? We used branched. So could we call this compound branched tubular? We could. OK, now normally you don't because my understanding is if it is compound, it's going to be branched, too. It's just understood that it's branched. But if you want to call that compound branch tubular, compound branched alveolar, compound branch tubular alveolar, you could. OK, but you don't have to. If it's compound, it's understood to be branched. So again, branched means several different secretory units sharing the same duct. So we have several secretory units sharing the same duct here, several secretory units sharing the same duct here, and several secretory units sharing the same duct here. So this is definitely branched, but you don't have to use that. OK, uh, notice that this one is not branched because you have one duct and one secretory unit one duct and one secretory unit. So that is the only time that you would not use branched is if you had one duct and one secretory unit. Okay, so let's look at the assignment that you're going to be doing for me today. Uh, again, you do have an epithelial tissues quiz on class marker that I need for you to uh, complete for me today uh, between 9 and 9.45. Again, once you start, you'll have 10 minutes to complete. Uh, it will be uh, six pictures, one of each type of lining and covering epithelial tissues. You will have to give me a name, a function, and a location. So it isn't multiple choice. You will be writing out those answers for me. So make sure that if you haven't taken it yet that you study before you take it so that you have plenty of time to answer all six questions because you are going to have to be typing out answers to everything. Okay, uh, so the practice that we're going to do today, uh, again, it's another interactive notebook. I give you a picture and then I'm giving you a little sentence here and using the sentence and the picture, you're going to tell me the type of secretion, the mode of secretion, and the name of the gland. So first of all, you guys, by looking at the picture, we can only get the name of the gland. We cannot get these other two things. So you have to use the sentence to get the other two things, okay? And um, we are going to be having an epithelial uh, tissue test tomorrow, and you're going to have to do something very similar on the test tomorrow as well. So, um, so let's look at the sentence first so we can get the type and the mode of secretion. Again, remember type is serous, mucus or mixed. And remember, mode is apocrine, uh, is mericrine, apocrine or holocrine. So the, this gland produces a viscous product by exocytosis. Well, this word exocytosis should look familiar to you. The, that gives us the mode. Exocytosis is a mericrine secretion. So that is going to go here under mode, mericrine. Okay, so we would just type in our word mericrine. Okay. And again, we got that from that word exocytosis. Now, the type is either serous mucus or mixed. It's watery, thick, or both. Well, what word in here tells us watery or thick? Well, it's this word right here. I don't know if you guys know that word, but viscous means very thick. Okay, viscous is thick. So when we use that word viscous, which means thick, we know this must be a mucus secretion. That gives us our type. So I'm going to double click in that box and I'm going to put my answer mucus. Okay, so then the only thing I have left to do is, is give the name of the gland. Well, notice I have only one duct here. So I know that it is a simple gland because it has only one duct. The duct does not divide. Then notice these look like round pockets to me, so I know that it is alveolar, but notice it's not just one round pocket, it's three round pockets. So we have three secretory units here sharing the same duct, and the word for that is branched. So simple branched, and then 
alveolar for the round pockets. Okay, so there's the name of my gland, simple branched alveolar. So, um, what you're going to be doing in the rest of these, I have a picture on each one along with a sentence. You're going to use the sentence to give you the type and the mode, and then you're going to use the picture to give you the name. Do these six for me and then submit this to me today. Uh, last thing I want to talk about, as I said just a few minutes ago, we are going to be having a test tomorrow, which is Friday, August the 28th, over uh, the epithelial tissue. So your test is going to look just like your quizzes and your practice that we've done. Okay, you're going to have one of each of the six lining and covering epithelial tissue. So you're going to have one simple squamous, one simple cuboidal, one simple columnar, one pseudo stratified columnar, one stratified squamous, and one transitional. You'll have one of each one. I will give you pictures. You will have to tell me the name of the tissue that's in the picture. You will also give me the function and one location. So just like you did on your practice that you that you did for me uh, yesterday. Give me a name and a function and one location based upon the identification of the picture that is in the question. Again, now I know that if you identified, let's say you identified as simple squamous, but it was actually simple columnar, okay? Well, okay, you missed the identification, but if you give me the correct, if you give me the correct function and location for the one that you said, simple columnar, then I will give you that credit. I won't count that off. So, so if, because I know the function and the location depend upon the name that you give me. So if you misidentify it, but you get the, you give me the correct function and location for the, for the one that you, for the name that you did give me, then you will only miss the identification part and you won't miss the function and the location. Okay. Now, for your, uh, for your glandular epithelial part, it's going to be very similar to what you're doing here on this practice, this interactive notebook practice. I'm going to give you a picture, and I'm going to give you a sentence. And from that picture and sentence, you will give me a type, a mode, and a name for that gland. Okay, so again, remember, you use the sentence to get the type and the mode. You use the picture to get the name. So, um, you will have three of those on your test for Friday as well. So your test for Friday will not be really long. It will have six lining and covering epithelial tissues that you will give me the name, function, and location, one location for. And then it will have three glands that you will give me the type, mode, and name of the gland. Okay? And that will be your test. It will be very similar to what we've been doing all week in this practice. Please let me know if you have any questions, and I hope you have a great day. Bye-bye.